the one want to extract the brain. Sheep that's a sheep head? Yes. It's a three year old ewe. Yeah, she's previously frozen. So what I'm going to do is uh, skin the top of her scalp, skin out around the eyes, so that I can access the good parts. Get a fillet knife that works pretty well. Usually with ewes, their heads aren't as uh, hard as a ram, so like you can access through the crown. Once you get it skinned away, they can chisel. I use a pair of pliers, but you can also use a hammer. Mm -hmm. And some of them are harder than others, so you just go around, you have to get a big enough uh, access point to get a spoon in. But usually once you get a couple good cracks, the rest of it comes easier. So chap, chap. Yeah. If you want to get fancy, you could probably get circular saw, or a little surgical saw, and dremel it out, but I like the brutal method. Once it gets to a certain point, sometimes I take the pliers and just pry it out. You can get a good grip on it. Yeah. Mmm, there she is. Uh-huh. Yeah, just like that. You pick out some of the bone fragments, mm -hmm. but then underneath you got two beautiful hemispheres. Mm -hmm. Let's take a small sharp spoon. Start scooping. You want to get every bit of it, you can get smaller spoons or implements and get in there and really scrape it all out. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, the spoon gets most of what you need. I think that's about it. You ever notice any uh, like wild dreams after you eat brains or anything? Because I know myself and some other people report that. Oh, yeah. Like it's. Uh, quite remarkable. I mean, the, the colors, the vividness of the dreams, and uh, just almost like the clarity and a lucidity where mm -hmm. you can almost feel the dream and the most lucid dreams I have are usually shortly after eating a bunch of brain. Yeah, that's crazy, man. That's, I've heard so many people say that and it's happened to me a bunch of times. And, and the eyes too. I don't know if it's where it's, the eyes are connected to the same tissues or that has the same profile of fatty acids, but sometimes if I just eat the two eyes, you know, I'll still have a, it won't be as intense. Oh, really? As the brains, but just the eyes themselves wow. also have a similar effect. I've never noticed that because I always eat the brains with the eyes. Uh -huh. So well, they're, yeah, they go together. That's yeah. for sure. But if you just that. eat the eyes separate, you can still have an effect. It might not be as strong. All right. I didn't bring my fork down. Might be able to get this spoon to work. But yeah, you got to cut around the periphery. And having a good long sharp knife. They can reach back in there, helps. Mm -hmm. Pop it out. Get back in there. There's some really good fat back there. And like I said, depending on how hungry you are and how needy you are, you can get back in there and scrape out all that little bit of fat in the back. And that's like really good quality fat. Mm -hmm. Like the whole. 
You ever do anything with the tongue? Oh yeah. 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 I'll take the tongue out too. And go ahead and get the other eyeball. And the cheek meat, like you can skin the cheek and you can get some meat off of it. And it's hard to get all the meat off of the head because it's just so attached to the skull. So a lot of people will, you know, boil heads down in the bra. Mm -hmm. It is one of Genghis Khan's favorite boiled cheap head. Mm. Cheap ring. stuff. Oh, this is the best. If you want a side of red meat, you can always get the cheeks and get a little bit of cheek meat to go with it. So you're not just eating the fat, because the eyes and the, the brain are mostly fat. Cholesterol. You got any theories to why the brain, um, give such intense dreams you think it's I mean obviously something in the brain right mm -hmm. I mean the neurotransmitters themselves yeah it's possible you just get a real sharp uptake in the neurotransmitters and yeah. a lot of the yeah the endorphins of the brain mm -hmm. the DMT that the, the animal released when it died yeah like I bleed all mine out mm -hmm. I cut their jugular and so they die naturally and uh, they bleed out and that release of uh, DMT probably saturates the brain on top of you know all the other essential fatty acids, the DHA, which is the precursors for us to make our own neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's just a lot of different elements in there that could go into it. <clears throat> it's not being studied properly. So yeah, I mean, yeah, there's never been any studies on it, which is pretty fascinating and like, it's just it's only really talked about in the raw community when you talk about the brain dreams you know so it's just really cool to just kind of speculate on what's going on there and not only the brain dreams but the the oldest archaeological finds that all the skulls were smashed mm -hmm. our ancestors our hunter-gatherer ancestors ate the brains mm -hmm. they probably cherished them preferred them because all the bones and the skulls of the archaeological finds have been cracked open and they've had the brains scooped out and the tongue, the eyes, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's stuff that our ancestors had to have eaten <clears throat> because, I mean, necessity. <laughs> if you're hungry enough, you'll go, you'll scrape it to the bone. Yeah. And this is what we had to do to survive. But now they throw these away. I know, it's crazy. I can go to the, to the live meat market down the street and I can pick up five heads at a time, you know, because nobody wants it. It's very rare someone wants to boil it down or whatever, but people just don't realize what's in there. And the the kind of euphoria that comes off the brain too, you know, after eating it, it's like no no other organ. Yeah, I mean, there's caveats. I really don't recommend people just get any brain off the market and just yeah. start eating it raw because you don't know where they come from and. But if it's from a healthy source, if it's clean, if it's not full of chemicals, drugs, and GMOs, yeah, and you know the source, so you've seen the farm, or even you've seen the animal live itself, and you know just from experience that it's a healthy animal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd recommend if that's a possibility, yeah, at least know where it comes from. Yeah. All right, so that's good for now. Cool. I mean, you want to eat an eyeball, or? Sure. Let's do it. So I usually, uh, can you, can you set it up? Usually, uh, yeah, it's kind of pointing right at you there. Yeah. I usually like to, uh, cut the eyeball on the front. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. A little bit, just to get the fluid out, you know? Eat the gel. Yeah. Yep. The ocular fluid. Yeah. Like, a little easier to swallow.
You get me? Oh yeah, that's right on it. Some structured water in here too, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the saline. You can taste it. Mm. Almost like an ocean water. Mm-hmm. Very, very clean. And the fats around the eye, they taste really like pure cream. Some of the cleanest, purest fats on the animal. Mm. And then the tissue of the eye itself is, is tough. So what you do is you chew it down and you can let the fats melt. And then if you keep chewing on it, it turns into this gum. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's almost like a connective tissue gum. And there's been times where I've just chewed on the eyeball for a couple hours. And just extract every bit out of it. Mm -hmm. It was chewy. <laughs> yeah, I need to save some of that fat. When I cut an eyeball out, I usually don't save that fat on there. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah, get in there and scrape it out. I mean, there's different tools and scrapers and stuff you can get to get in there really good. A good sharp mm -hmm. tip knife and some mm -hmm. time you can scrape out the, the very back of the ocular socket. Oh, yeah. And then the, it's good, man. What else? Tongue? Want we'll try a tongue and brain? Yeah. Piece of tongue. Sheep tongue before? I've, uh, I don't, I don't think I've had sheep tongue. I've had cow tongue a couple of times. Mm. Oh, sheep tongue's the best. <laughs> of course, I'm, I have my preferences. I just. This is good. Mm -hmm. Let's get into the brain of the matter. Mm hmm. Can you tell any difference from sheep or cow? <clears throat> um, I've only had cow a couple times from uh, Amos Miller's. Mm -hmm. Not really. I haven't had a cow enough to tell a big difference, but pretty similar. Good, man. Oh, yeah. Well done. While we're out here, I got my jar of Oriums. I could break that out. Mm -hmm. I think it's from the same animal. So, what I do is uh, whenever I get a fresh animal, I'll cut up bits and pieces of the organ meats while they're still fresh still full of fluid and uh, I'll preserve them in a glass mason jar. I vacuum seal the lid and keep it in the freezer and that keeps it preserved, it keeps it from getting freezer burned. And then whenever, say towards the end of my animal and I don't have a lot of reserves fresh, I can thaw this out and I get fresh, uh, this is a spleen, mm -hmm. you know, real spongy spleen tissue. So I eat all the glands and the organs. And this is a little bit of probably cardiac fat off the heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Spleen, the heart. Oh, yeah. There's a chunk of heart. See? There you yeah. go. <laughs> cool. And there's just something about the organ meats. I think it has concentrations of vitamins and fats. You know, each one has its own particular needs. 
and that when you eat all the organ meats, you're pretty sure to get all the vitamins and nutrients that you need to operate your own organs. Oh, here's a part of a kidney. Yeah. You ever have sheep kidney? <laughs> um, no. I've had <clears throat> cow kidney. I like it, man. Mm -hmm. I think I like kidney almost, maybe a little better than liver. Mm -hmm. I like it. Just got a little kind of a stronger flavor to it. It depends on the animal. You probably haven't had sheep liver, right? Or um, lamb. I've had fresh lamb liver, but not sheep. Mm -hmm. You want to try it back? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's different. Like I said, I like it. It's really, especially if it comes from a good animal. It's really sweet and mild and fresh. More piece of bone. It's a hazard. I'm more attuned to it because I'm smashed bones and I can cut everything up myself. But you eat, eat the bones? No, I, but what I'm careful when I, I bite because mm -hmm. you know, every now and then you'll get that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But so far so good. I don't think I've broken any teeth. I think this type of diet actually strengthens your teeth because if you chew enough you know it strengthens your jaws and I think it feeds the nutrients to <clears throat> the roots of your teeth and it strengthens your overall dental <laughs> mm -hmm. structure much in the way that Weston Price noticed the hunter gatherers yeah. had broad jaws and well formed teeth mm -hmm. so I think eating this way is really good well I know my gums have never looked more healthy than on this diet mm -hmm. nice uh, bright pink and no teeth issues in the last four years definitely Had the liver? Did you try the kidney? Nope. Yeah. Okay, try sheep kidneys. I think if you like kidney, you'll like sheep kidney. Mm -mm. It's good. Yeah, it's a little more mild than um, beef kidney, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said about these, these sheep have been on grass. Mm -hmm. But where they come from, Georgia, they're a little south of here, they never had the hay in the winter. So these animals have never even eaten cut hay. They're beyond grass fed. Mm -hmm. They're forage raised. You know, they're raised completely Those off are some the good organs, man. And so, like, you can taste the difference. And I know good kidneys, and when you eat kidneys from animals, even if they're grass fed, that have been fed a lot of hay, yeah. or fed off of water supply that might not be as optimal, yeah. you can see it in the coloration of the kidneys. Like, the, there's layers of really pale tissue in some of the more unhealthy kidneys and you mm -hmm. can see the darker richer colors in the healthier kidneys so there's different indications all the organs if you have eaten them raw like this for a long time you can just tell by you know subtle differences in the taste you know whether the, they're of good quality or not yeah that's some really uh that was like really clean tasting kidney man that was good well cool and of course, I can get my liver jerky out. Oh, yeah. So, a lot of people in the primal community do fermented meats. Like, I have a little bit of liver here. Mm -hmm. And I've been practicing, and I, I've not gotten through a whole cycle yet of getting halfway high meat and then age it. So, what I've been doing is uh, aging liver, letting it hang, and then I cut it into strips. And as the aged liver dries out, it turns into like a jerky meat. Mm. And so it's almost like a taffy chew. Mm -hmm. like you can try it. And it's, it's good, and I think it has the qualities of the probiotic without sacrificing on the taste because mm -hmm. it still has a little bit of fresh and a little bit of aged mixed in. And it's a real intense flavor. Mm hmm. You can taste the sweetness in there for sure, too. Uh huh. Well, just like when you dehydrate anything, it, it concentrates the flavor. Mm -hmm. So, when you slightly dehydrate aged organs, like it just 
Mm -hmm. It seems to have a concentration of flavor. And at the same time, it's a way to preserve it because if you put fresh liver in a plastic bag and you set it in the back of your fridge, yeah. it's going to get the anaerobic bacteria and it's not going to be anything you want to eat. Mm -hmm. But if you let it dry age, if you let it air out in the oxygen, mm -hmm. as it dries, you know, the drying process helps you know the oxygen rich bacteria take over and it's not too it doesn't mold it doesn't mildew and so mm -hmm. it's real it still maintains a little bit of freshness mm -hmm. so i think you get the best of both worlds if you can dry age properly mm -hmm. and so uh, having a fridge unit like this helps because uh this is a freezer that has an analog thermostat where i can dial in the temperature mm -hmm. and so right now it's at 32 degrees which is right at freezing, but because of the salt content of the meat, it's you know freezes at a slightly colder temperature. And so I keep it at freezing, or now see I'm out of the fridge, it's getting a little warmer. Mm -hmm. But I try to keep it at you know freezing or a little bit above just to just so that it gives a little bit of aging process. Mm -hmm. But you can adjust it because it's a it's got a bypass where you can adjust it to the, mm -hmm. the degree. And then the humidity, the humidity is high because I've been cleaning everything out. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but when you put it in there and you close everything and seal it up, usually the humidity will drop down below 50%. Mm -hmm. And all the water will fall into the bottom. And uh, usually to set a towel in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Like soak up the water. Like you can just take a cotton towel and put it in the bottom. And then if it gets soaked through, you can change it out. And this way I try to regulate the moisture content of the meat locker. Mm -hmm. And if you can't get a meat locker that adjusts to the right temperature, you can still cut your meat short in uh, smaller pieces and put a little fan in the bottom and you can dry age it a little quicker if you don't have the, the setup that I have. Mm -hmm. Or even if you just have a refrigerator with a little rack, you can cut the meat into small strips or bigger chunks and hang them on hooks mm -hmm. like this and then they can dry age out like this you know this is from an animal from probably a month and a half or so previous mm -hmm. and what's left of it will dry and then i can if i want a little dry aged jerky i can still eat some of it see so it's been in there over a month and a half Mm -hmm. And uh, not brought in, just, just dried. Mm -hmm. um, it's chewy, like it's, it's just like jerky. Mm -hmm. But I like it, prefer it. It's more flavorful. Let's see if I can get in here. <laughs> there. Mm. So, yeah, I'll cut you a piece. So, this is a dry aged air jerky. Never heated. Always raw. Fresh animal. Slaughtered yourself. <clears throat> it's good stuff, man. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, once I've started doing it this way, I can't do it any other way. I bet. I've been doing this for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And you can't buy this stuff. And you can't be sure of it any other way. Unless you've seen that animal alive in the field and you met the farmer and you mm -hmm. picked it up yourself and you cut into it yourself, you looked over every single gland, every single organ, you see the tissues, you can notice subtle differences if there's something not right, mm -hmm. and then the taste, you taste everything all along the way. Mm -hmm. That had to have been how our ancestors were able to ascertain what was good and what wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just trying to bring that back into the common knowledge, which everybody knew back in the day where survival depended upon your ability to taste and your ability to discern good from bad and i'm just trying to bring it back to where you have personal responsibility over your choices and you can go out and source the best quality you can find and we should be able to do that and i think that that's our right yeah. so i'm going to continue to do this as long as i'm capable yeah and it takes a little time and it takes a little work and it's not always easy depending on where you live but i know most parts of the world if you go out a little ways 
you can find in a small family farm, and you can find somebody who raises you know good quality animals, and mm -hmm. you know, patronize them. <laughs> yep. Give them your business, and if you can't raise them yourself, then find somebody who can and, and support them, and then you can build it up. Hundred percent, man. <clears throat> oh, oh, I want to do something. I don't have a. That's what I wanted to do. This is the. I might have to get a couple of tools. Okay. What that to do with my stall? I'll be right back. All right, cool.